All right, at this point, we have our bearings installed in the cases, so now it's time to put the oil seals in or the crank seals in. So we'll take our crank seals out of their little package. These you can usually put in by hand, and that's what we're going to attempt to do. We're going to use a little bit of two-stroke oil as assembly lube. And all I'm going to do is, in the case itself, I'm just going to put a little drop of it in there, swirl it around, do the same on the the seal, just a little tiny bit's all you need. Put it in there and using your thumbs, basically you're just going to give it as even a pressure as you can all the way around and it slides right in there. It should be somewhat firm to press in because obviously it is a seal. And Just keep working it all the way around and you'll feel it seat down at the bottom. And you're done with that one. Same on the other side, a little bit of assembly lube inside the race. Swirl it around. A little bit on the seal. And again with your thumb. This one's a little stiffer to put in. Now if you can't do this with your thumbs, the other thing you can do is you can get yourself a socket that fits as close as you can to the outside edge and you can use a small, uh, like a mallet or something like that and just lightly tapping on it, double checking every tap to make sure that it's seating in straight. You don't want to put this in crooked and keep hammering on it or you can damage the seal. So we'll just keep pushing this in until it's seated all the way down onto the C-clip. It'll be about an eighth of an inch, eh, not quite an eighth of an inch below the surface and we're done. Okay, at this point we have our crank bearings and our crank seals installed into the case. So it's time to put the actual crank in, put the crank or the case gasket on, and bolt this whole thing up. So we'll get our thing of gaskets here, dump all these out, and we are after the case seat, the case gasket, which is that guy. And we obviously we need our crank. So what I'm going to do is when we install the crank, we're going to lube everything up. We're going to lube the two shafts on the crank up. And I'm also going to put a little lube on the crank seals so we don't tear or bind or, or tear up anything as we assemble this. So we get our seal out. I'm just going to put a little bit on my pinky or a lot and get that both sides lubed up. And then on each side, I'm just going to put a little bit inside each seal so it's nice and slippery when we slide the crank through. And we'll go back and wipe off that excess when we're done. So now that that's ready to go, we will take the crank and remember that the threaded side of the crank is going onto the big side of the case. This is going to have the flywheel attached to it and then you'll remember that big flange nut that's holding the flywheel on. So all we're going to do is hold the, uh, the crank arm or the crank rod up and just slide it in there nice and gently. You don't want to force it. It should slide in pretty easily. Give it a little bit of rotation as we go and you'll see as it slides through. It should make a little click sometimes. Make sure that it's in there. Nothing's binding up. At this point, I'm going to take our, our gasket and line it up on those three little pins on the other side. They should line up just right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and slide it down on top. So with that, we're just going to slide straight down. You got to make sure that the crank arm, the connecting rod, is sticking up. You don't want to bind it as we slide these two together. Make sure that gasket does not uh, pinch up or, or pop out of place and then just give it a little bit of pressure. You might need to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. We're actually going to squeeze this together. And there we go. And it's popped together. The gasket's in place all the way around. We didn't bind up on the connecting rod at all. And we'll give that a quick rotate. And it's rotating nice and smooth. So with that, we'll get our hardware out and we'll bolt the two halves together. 
All right, with our case halves put together with the crank in, we need to bolt the crank case together. So we're going to get our crank bolts back out. And I prefer to use a little bit of blue Loctite on these just for that extra measure of security. So we're just going to put a little bit on, not need for much. And we're going to just start all of these. Get all four in. Okay, all four in. And like I said, we'll just start, go all the way around. Get a little tighter as we go. All right, we've got a pretty good snug on all these guys. We've got a little bit of blue Loctite for safety. And they're in. The one thing you do need to do on here is you'll see that from the, the case gases, there's a little, little bit hanging out there. So what we're gonna do is just grab a razor blade and we're going to trim those off. Remember, we don't want these obviously to fall in the crankcase. So what I prefer to do is just lay the, the razor blade on nice and smooth. You don't want to nick up the top and just slice it off. And it should be nice and smooth. We'll do that to both sides. There we go, nice and smooth. Now that we've essentially finished the bottom end, the crankcase and crank, we're ready to put the, bat, the top end back on. After some inspection, we found that our top end is actually not in very good shape. The piston has a lot of scuff marks on it where it's actually worn away the machine marks, which is not good. We actually found some pretty deep grooves in the side of it. So this, this motor probably ingested some sand or some other particles. So on inspection of the cylinder, there's not much inside the cylinder that shows damage, but nonetheless, we don't want to replace just the piston. And like I said, there is some signs of wear down on the bottom end. So we're just going to set these guys aside. And we've decided that since we have to replace the top end, we get ourselves a new Zenoa 26cc top end. It's a nice top end. It comes with a new spark plug, piston, uh, crank in bearing, uh, gaskets, wrist pin, pretty much everything you need, even a new spark plug. Uh, here's all our parts, new spacers, a new base gasket. The one thing that you are going to need to buy separately is that you're going to need the, the actual wrist pin bearing uh, for the top is going to be a new purchase. Uh, we're switching from a CY top end to a Zenoa top end and actually they use a different size wrist pin bearing so that will need to be uh, pur purchased separately. Now that we have our new top end all unpacked and ready to go it's time to start assembling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the piston, wrist pin, wrist pin bearing first. Get all this other stuff out of the way. What's important here are these two little clips. So let me cut this guy open. So these two little tiny clips right here, one is going to go into each side of the piston. These are what's going to retain the piston pin, the wrist pin, into the, the, uh, the piston itself. These are pretty delicate and these can drive you insane to put them in, but take your time and be patient and you can get them in. I highly recommend getting some really good quality small needle nose that have the knurls inside each, each of the end of the, the tips there. It makes it a lot easier to grab these things and to work with. So anyways, I grab them and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's a small groove in there. And the idea is to basically start one side in using your thumb and some fingers, some fancy finger work. You just gotta twist it really gently and get those guys in there. 